In the last class, we discussed about the wastewater treatment that is, so we discussed about uh, primary treatment, secondary treatment and tertiary treatment. In fact, uh, we also discussed uh, further on the various units that are present in the primary treatment and certain design aspects. The systems that are the units or the systems that are present in the primary treatment are that is screens then grid chamber and sedimentation tank. These are the very important uh, parameters. These are very important uh, units. These units are designed and some of the design aspects we have seen. In today's class, we will discuss about the secondary treatment. Secondary treatment is very, very important because the objective of the secondary treatment is to The objectives of secondary treatment is number one to remove biodegradable biodegradable organic matter and this biodegradable organic matter is in terms of two things one is a colloidal form as well as dissolved form. So, the secondary treatment is aimed at removing the organic matter which is biodegradable okay? and that organic matter which is biodegradable may be present in the form of a colloidal, fo colloidal form or it is in the form of a dissolved form. So, this organic matter if not removed from the wastewater and if we discharge the wastewater with this organic matter into the rivers, then there will be oxygen depletion. So, discharge of uh, uh, wastewater containing organic matter is not permitted, we have to remove it. So, in order to remove it, what we do is we employ biological waste treatment systems, biological waste treatment plants. The purpose of biological waste treatment plant is to remove the organic matter that is a colloidal form as well as in the dissolved form. So, the biological waste treatment plants obviously employs the microorganisms. Microorganisms or important or most important uh, components of a biological wastewater treatment system. So, as the microorganisms do the work for us that is a cleaning up of the environment. So, we should know something more about the microorganisms or the microbes and uh, in fact, the microbes are used uh, microbes are used to clean up the environment. we are using the microorganism to clean up the environment. The environment could be, okay, I will write environment, okay, ENV is for environment. I could you uh, environment could be three types of en environments. One is what is called, uh, uh, it could be lithosphere, 
it could be hydrosphere, it could be atmosphere. Lithosphere means land, okay. Uh, the three components of the environment are one is lithosphere that is a land environment where we live in and then hydrosphere is a water environment which use for uh, you know the water for various beneficial uses and also the third component of the environment is atmosphere which is the air we breathe and uh, so on. So that means if the environment is polluted that polluted with the biodegradable organic matter what we try to do is we clean up the environment okay using the microorganisms if i clean up the lithosphere land clean up of uh, land if i call it using the microorganisms again everywhere i am using the microorganisms for cleaning up then it is called bioremediation bioremediation is a process by means of which I can clean up the pollutants present in the land using the microorganisms. If I uh, in the river waters, if I want to uh, clean up the river, now next is the clean up of the, the river. So I employ what is called a waste water treatment plants, waste water treatment plants are designed to clean up the uh, waste before it enters into the rivers. So cleaning up for the river is by employing uh, the waste water treatment plant, treat the waste water treat, treat the waste water and discharge into the rivers that is a clean up of the environment uh, as far as the lithosphere uh, that is the hydrosphere is concerned, the river is a hydrosphere. Third type of thing is atmosphere. So air pollutants that are present in the environment, air pollutants that are present in the atmosphere can be uh, removed using the microorganisms. In such a case we use what is called a bio trickling filters using bio trickling filters we can uh, sort of a clean up the air. So the air may contain like uh, socks, oxides of sulphur, oxides of nitrogen, socks and NOx. So socks and NOx can be removed using the biological reactors. So in other words the microorganisms are very versatile, they can be used to remove the pollutants from the land, they can be used to, uh, to remove the pollutants from the river, from the water they can be used to remove the pollutants from the uh, air, all three things are present. So now it is a basic requirement for us since we employ the microorganisms to do work for us to clean up the environment, we should know more about the microorganisms. So now that particular thing microorganisms are to some extent I will say that microbiology, we should know something about the microbiology. I will give a brief introduction for the microbiology. So microbiology that is required for the waste treatment or for clean up of the environment we will discuss only that particular uh, microbiology that is required. So the microbiology means in this particular thing what I will be discussing is the types of microorganisms types of microorganisms we like to employ in the wastewater treatment or in the treatment of the land or in the treatment of the air. So the types of microorganisms we will discuss and then their nutritional requirements, nutri nutritional requirement of microorganisms which is important that we will discuss and the environmental conditions we will also discuss about environmental conditions which affects the environmental conditions which affect the growth of microorganisms we will discuss. We will also discuss about what is called a 
biokinetic parameters for the microorganisms biokinetic parameters for the microorganisms these biokinetic bio parameters are required they are required for the design of the treatment system for the design purposes this is required so for the design purposes the biokinetic parameters that are required are the following so for example i would like to know the growth rate of microorganisms that is again writing biokinetic parameters that is growth rate rate at which the microorganisms are growing of microbes in a given uh, organic matter my, microbial growth rate uh, bod removal rate will study and decay rate of microorganisms will study all these things in the biokinetic parameters all these parameters ought to be found out in order to design effectively the treatment system design of treatment system so in a series of lectures we are going to discuss these things and finally i also would like to uh, discuss in this particular thing the microbiology the bioreactors types of bioreactors that are employed that are employed to treat the waste water okay and also the type of bioreactors is one thing and also we will say that the oxygen requirements by the microbes will also be discussed in this particular thing and finally i will discuss the uh, treatment systems like treatment units like activated sludge then trickling filter and thirdly anaerobic systems we will discuss the design of uh, these things at the end of uh, the series of lectures you should be a in a position to design given the waste water and its characteristics and the quantity of waste water or the flow rate of waste water i should be able to choose uh, which of the treatment systems I should employ and how to design that particular treatment system. That is what we are going to do in series of lectures from today onwards. So, now let us see coming back to the type of microorganisms. Taking the first thing the type of microorganisms I there are many ways by means of which the microorganisms can be classified okay there are several ways and i will use a method of classification which is based on the nutritional requirement nutrient requirements any microorganism for that matter any living system including us would require the following things number 1 we require an energy source in the food we eat we require energy source energy source is required in order to produce the energy for the microorganisms so we also required what is called a carbon source that means the food we eat we eat should contain a carbon compounds the food we eat should con contain a compounds which produce energy. So, this energy that is produced from the energy source will be utilized for two purposes. 
one is for the maintenance maintenance and for the other thing is for the biosynthesis. maintenance and biosynthesis. Main, maintenance energy that is uh, the energy required for the cell to move around, tell cell to conduct certain activities. So, that is the maintenance energy, this is a biosynthesis for producing the more biomass. So, this is a carbon source, carbon source is required for the growth of microorganisms, growth of microbes. Okay, growth of microorganisms, we require the carbon source. That means the food we ate or the organic matter I am providing to the microorganism should contain a carbon source, it should contain an energy source. Suppose there are different types of energy sources or the microorganisms can utilize different components, different compounds for the energy source. For example, for energy if microorganisms use microbes use organic carbon compound, organic compounds for energy, if it is used, if it uses organic compounds for energy, then it is called heterotrophic, organism, it is called heterotrophic organism is anyway there, it is heterotrophic, it has, to, it will use organic compound for energy and uh, this heterotrophic organism uses organic compound for energy, it also uses organic compound for biosynthesis as carbon source. So, same organic compound same organic compound can be used as a carbon source as well as energy source by heterotrophic organisms. These are the majority of organisms present, majority of organisms we encounter in nature, majority of microbes we encounter in nature or of this heterotrophic in nature. In fact, heterotrophic organisms are those organisms or the organisms we employ mostly in the wastewater treatment. So, these are employed in the wastewater treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant these are employed. So, suppose if uh, you, um, if uh, the microorganisms utilize instead of uh, organic compound for energy purpose, if they utilize inorganic compounds for energy purpose, they are known as chemoautotrophic organisms. So, the second group of organisms are chemoautotrophs, chemoautotrophs, autotrophs is self dependent. So, they are independent organisms, they are depending on self only, self dependent organisms and they depend on the chemo, chemo means chemical, they depend on the chemical or uh, chemicals that is chemicals or inorganic chemicals. For example, energy source, energy source for the chemo autotrophs or uh, energy source is inorganic, inorganic compound. So, inorganic compound, compounds like ammonia. So, this inorganic compound like ammonia is oxidized to nitrite and nitrate, it is oxidized to nitrite and nitrate to produce energy. So, this produces energy, this energy that is produced is in the form of ATPs, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, okay. this ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate is a energy rich compound and it gives out the energy 
whenever energy is required. So, ATPs are produced. These organisms which utilize uh, this is oxidized ammonia to nitrite to nitrate in the presence of oxygen, oxygen is required for this and these organisms this is called nitrosomonas and this organism here it is called nitrobacter. It is called nitrobacter. These are the two organisms which utilize the inorganic compounds for energy purpose. Okay. Second thing is that what is the carbon source for them? Carbon source could be inorganic carbon compound. Inorganic carbon compound. So, the organism, these organisms which utilize uh, the inorganic compounds for energy and inorganic compounds as a carbon source for the uh, carbon source is required as I told you for the growth of microorganisms. This is used for the growth. Okay. So, the this carbon source, this is the energy source and this is a carbon source. These are known as autotrophic organisms. These are special organisms we use them in specifically for the nitrification nitrification to occur in uh, tertiary treatment because i discussed about the nitrification when i discussed about the tertiary treatment so in the tertiary treatment the nitrification occurs and i want nitrification to take place so this will happen you i mean this will occur because of these microorganisms the third type of organisms is what is called a photoautotrophs autotrophic organisms photoautotrophic organisms are those which contain which utilize sunlight energy source in this case is sunlight they get energy from sunlight they trap uh, energy from the sunlight and utilize the carbon dioxide as a carbon source. Carbon source is carbon dioxide. The simple reaction I can write it here is they utilize carbon dioxide plus water and uh, this is the sunlight in the form of H nu sunlight. This is H nu is sunlight, Planck constant and they, this is the uh, energy sunlight energy and these these are the photosynthetic these are photosynthetic plants and uh, microscopic photosynthetic plant example is algal cell algal cell so with this reaction what would happen is that the resultant of this reaction h2o n plus oxygen H 2 O N N is nothing but a carbohydrate. This is a carbohydrate. They prepare carbohydrate a form of formula for carbohydrate and oxygen is produced by the photosynthetic cell. This is a photosynthetic reaction what we are writing. So, we have we utilize photoautotrophic organisms like algae in the wastewater treatment especially for the uh, in, in oxidation ponds. The example where we use this particular thing is oxidation pond example of photosynthetic uh, photo autotrophic thing uh, organisms is oxidation ponds. Okay, that is what we use uh, the photosynthetic autotrophic organisms that means we use heterotrophic organisms, we use uh, uh, chemo autotrophic organisms and we also use photo autotrophic organisms for the wastewater treatment depending upon the type of reactors we are designing. So, uh, basically most uh, commonly used wastewater treatment or commonly used microorganisms in wastewater treatment as I have already indicated are heterotrophic organisms. Okay. Heterotrophs are organisms. So, again I am re 
uh, emphasize that the classification of these organisms are based on the nutritional requirement, okay. That is the carbon source and then the energy source. That is what I have been discussing particularly these organisms. There are certain other classification. People have so many other classifications. Another classification I can tell you is, one is that based on the temperature. We, we have what is called a psychrophilic microorganisms. Psychrophilic microorganisms are those microorganisms which grow under low temperatures. For example, these organisms grow in the refrigerators also. They spoil the refrigerated food. So the organisms that grow around 4 degrees or to 10 degrees Celsius, they are psychrophilic organisms. Second type of organisms is mesophilic organisms. Mesophilic organisms are those organisms which grow in the medium temperature. Okay, that is about uh, say 27 to 35, 27 to 40 degrees Celsius. Then we have got thermophilic organisms. Thermophilic organisms are those organisms which grow at a higher temperature. That is about 40, 45 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. These are, this is yet another classification that is based on the temperature, the tolerance of uh, the microorganisms to the temperature. However, that classification is one classification, this classification another classification based on the nutritional requirements. So we will move forward with the uh, heterotrophic organisms because these heterotrophic organisms are employed very widely in the wastewater treatment. So these are widely employed. in wastewater treatment and most of the treatment plants are based on the activity of heterotrophic organisms and hence I should try to find out what is called growth curve for heterotrophic organisms. For these organisms I should like to know the what is a growth curve. That means what do you mean by growth curve? Growth curve is that how with respect to time, how the growth of microorganism take place in a reactor. Let me consider a batch reactor. What is a batch reactor? Batch reactor is a reactor where there is no inflow or outflow. That is batch, this is a batch reactor, no inflow or outflow or output from the reactor. So let me consider a batch reactor. This is a, a, a sort of a batch reactor where I have the liquid okay. and this batch reactor is completely mixed. I am mixing it completely, completely mixed reactor. That means the contents of the reactors are, com, uh, contents are mixed thoroughly. That means wherever I take the sample, if I take the sample over here or over here, wherever I take the sample, the concentration of the contents will be the same, okay. That is what is called the batch reactor. Let us say in this batch reactor, I have at time t is equal to 0 to start with, I have what is called a concentration of a microorganisms, concentration of microorganisms, these microorganisms are heterotrophic microorganisms, this concentration of microorganisms is X0. So that means X0 is the concentration of the microorganisms in the reactor and then there is also food, the what is the food? Food is the energy source and carbon source, that is the, for the heterotrophic organisms, organic compounds recalling this organic compounds are both energy source and carbon source. Organic compounds provide energy as well as carbon to the microorganisms. So such organic compounds which produce, which give energy as well as the carbon for the biosynthesis for the growth of microorganisms is known as a substrate. Let us call this as a substrate. Substrate is also biodegradable organic matter. So substrate also can be said as a BOD, biochemical oxygen demand. 
oxygen that is required to uh, decompose or to oxidize the organic matter, uh, organic matter here is a substrate under aerobic conditions uh, oxygen required is nothing but the BOD. So, the BOD we can say the BOD is same thing as the substrate. So, let us take that at time t equal to 0 concentration of microorganisms is x naught and concentration of substrate I will go back here substrate is equal to S naught. So, in this reactor I have S naught and X naught at time t equal to 0 the, the conditions are X is equal to X naught and uh, S is equal to S naught. X is the biomass microbes concentration or biomass concentration that is also called as a biomass and S is the substrate concentration. Okay. What I do is that I now bring in contact the microorganisms and the substrate in the reactor at time t equal to 0 and I am mixing it completely and during this mixing what is happening is that I am also providing what is called aeration oxygen supply. I am also providing aeration or oxygen supply is also there in this reactor. So, because of this particular thing what would happen is the organisms utilize the organic matter present in the wastewater or present in this reactor. So, for example, if I say that organic compound can be called as a glucose, I will take a simple example C 6 H 12 O 6 is a glucose. So, this is a representative of organic matter in wastewater or this is nothing but the substrate for me now substrate plus oxygen this is mixing or aeration and aeration is providing the oxygen and then I have microorganisms and what type of microorganisms I have? We can say that they are heterotrophic microorganisms. The microorganisms which use organic compounds for energy purpose as well as for the carbon source or for biosynthesis. So, when these things happen what will happen is that the reaction will take place with the production of carbon dioxide plus water that is the carbon is com converted to carbon dioxide hydrogen to water okay, plus we will have energy. This energy is in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate as already indicated. So, this energy is used by the microorganisms to produce more cells. So, that is what is going to happen that means now what is happening is I am giving the food to the microorganisms, I am giving substrate to the microorganisms, the microorganisms utilize the organic matter and increase in the number or increase in the body weight. So, as a result of which as you have as the time progresses that is time is uh, as the time increases what would happen to x? x is going to increase, the biomass concentration increases and S is going to decrease. There is a decrease in the organic matter because microorganisms are utilizing, microorganisms utilize organic matter and increase in number that is x is increasing as the time progresses. So, if I were to plot a graph of this particular thing, this particular thing what is happening. So, time is on x axis and uh, micro will be concentration on the y axis. If I plot this particular thing what would happen is that at time t is equal to 0 I have certain amount of microorganisms that is x naught to start with. In fact, at time t equal to 0 whatever organisms are present or are introduced in the system they are called seed microorganisms seed present in the seed and uh, if you uh, if you try to find out the concentration of microorganisms as a function of uh, time. So, initially you may have something like this and then afterwards it will move up and then it will go and then it will be some sort of a stationary and then over a long period of time maybe I will break it here, I will break it here over a long period of time then it would be declining. So, there are four distinct segments 
of the curve. This curve is known as bacterial growth curve. This is a bacterial growth curve. When I am trying to grow the organisms in a batch process, batch process is a process where we do not have inflow and outflow. The organisms are growing within the closed environment. So, closed ecosystem, the microorganisms are growing. So, this is let me call it as a number 1 segment, this is number 2 segment, number 3 segment here, number 4 segment. There are 4 segments in the bacterial growth curve. This bacterial growth curve uh, indicates how the microorganisms are utilizing the, the food and growing in numbers. So, number 1 is called you can see here in the segment number 1, segment number 1, what is happening if you see there is no increase in the number of microorganisms, this is no increase, the almost uh, same microorganisms up to this time. This particular period is called a uh, lag period, lag period. The lag period is there because the microorganisms are put into a new environment, I am putting the microorganisms in the new environment and maybe the substrate, the food is new to them as a result of which they take some time to get acclimatized to the new environment and also to new substrate. So, during this particular process even though there is no net growth of microorganisms, lots of activities are taking place. So, the organisms are physiologically very active, they are very very active physiologically. What does it mean? It means that they are producing the new enzymes in their body, in the cells so as to act on the substrate and also to adjust to the new environmental conditions. So, this is physiologically active condition. physiologically active state. Lots of activities are taking place, enzymes are produced, they know how to degrade the uh, substrate that the food so that they can increase in the number. So, once having done that segment number 2 is called a log growth phase, log growth phase log growth phase is the organisms are multiplying or increasing exponentially, exponential growth. They are increasing and exponential growth rate, growth rate is exponential, okay. that is the reason why we have got a sudden increase here of microorganisms. As the microorganisms are increasing very rapidly, this is a number or this could I mean the microbial concentration is increasing rapidly. What is happening to the substrate concentration? The microorganisms increasing means substrate should be decreasing. There is a decrease in the substrate concentration number 1. Number 2 is that means what is happening because of this there are more or microorganisms and less food. So, in this particular case what is happening is more microbes. and less food. That means, there is a more competition for food. I told you that is a closed environment or closed ecosystem. In this closed ecosystem, there is no new food coming in. As a result of which the food is limited and the microorganisms are more and as a result of which there is a competition for the food. And because of that competition, then the growth rate starts decreasing. So, for example, if you take there is a point of inflection here, if you go straight like this, if it is exponential, it should have been like this, but there is a point of inflection from this point of on onwards, point of inflection where at the point of inflection there is a change in the slope of this particular curve. The slope of the curve starts decreasing, so it goes like this. So, the point of inflection is occurring because of the depletion of food. Okay. This is a depletion of food, depletion of substrate or food. Second thing is 
again I will restress that it is a closed environment. So, the toxic end product metabolic end product starts accumulating in the reactor. So, accumulation of toxic end product becomes you know harmful to the microorganisms we are not removing any material from this. So, toxic end products accumulate toxic end products and these end products are result of metabol metabolysis toxic metabolites toxic end products uh, products or toxic metabolites I will put it metabolites accumulate as a result of which the growth rate decreases the growth rate. So, as a result of these two things their net result is decrease in the growth rate. decrease in growth rate and this decrease in growth rate yields what is called no, uh, number 3 segment that is called a stationary phase. Number 3 is a stationary phase this is a stationary phase where there is no increase in the microbial concentration. So, that means this microbial concentration remains uh, constant here it, it has reached a plateau it will not increase further. So, this is called a stationary phase stationary phase there is no net growth. So, no net growth of microbes. Now, if you reach number 4 segment what is happening number 4 segment fourth segment is a segment where the microbial concentration is decreasing with the time as the time passes this is decreasing that means there is no growth in fact the, the destruction of uh, microbes this is result of destruction of microorganisms microorganisms are decreasing with time. So, that is what it is what is happening in this particular thing. So, why is it happening? the food is almost exhausted number 1 the reason for this is the substrate is exhausted is exhausted I will put it here number 1 number 2 reason for this particular thing is that accumulation of toxic metabolites again accumulation of toxic end products. So, these are the reasons which are responsible for the declining growth phase. So, if you look at the microbial um, growth rate or bacterial growth rate curve you will have got these 4 segments depending upon these 4 segments are depending upon the availability of the substrate and the growth of microorganisms. So, these are the uh, things this, this particular curve is very very important for us in uh, understanding what exactly is happening in the wastewater treatment plant. Now, let us move forward with this uh, after understanding the growth curve we will uh, try to follow this uh, what exactly happens to the reactor try to put some mathematical equations for this for the growth curve. So, there are in fact there are several mathematical models. to describe the growth rate for the growth rate growth rate of microorganisms ok. Number 1 is a very simple model we will use it what is called a, a sort of a based on Manoud's model and uh, people also have applied a, another model which is what is called a logistic growth model growth model to describe the growth curve or the behavior of growth of microorganisms. Now, let us see we will try to use the, both the models and then see how exactly we can uh, formulate some of the mathematical models 
So, the fundamentals of the mathematical models I will try to look at it now. Now, again I go back to this reactor, this reactor at time t equal to 0, x is equal to x naught, s is equal to s naught. Mind you, both s and x are measured in the same units. So, it could be, so the milligrams per liter of uh, biomass milligrams per liter of substrate. So, both are measured in terms of milligrams per liter, x and s are unit used measured in the same units. So, now let us say here, I can write down that uh, dx by dt rate of growth of rate of growth rate dx by dt is rate of growth rate of microbes is proportional to the microorganisms present at that time. This is one simple equation that is what we are taking. The growth rate is proportional to the x, x is the microorganisms present at that time. So, in other words this can be dx by dt is equal to mu into x. Uh, removing, removing the proportionality constant with the mu. Mu is known as the specific growth rate specific growth rate and the units of mu if you take it the units of x here x here same the cancel out mu will take a unit of t inverse time inverse mu has a unit of time inverse, mu is a specific growth rate. Okay. Now, this specific growth rate mu is not a constant, I will remove it here, mu is not a constant. Now, what is mu? Mu is a specific growth rate, specific growth rate of microorganisms should depend upon the concentration of the substrate. So, in other words mu is not a constant, mu is a function of a substrate concentration. Yes, that is what I will write. It is a um, function of substrate concentration and also it is a uh, function of environmental conditions. Let us say that environmental conditions are kept very conducive for the growth of microorganisms, we will not going to change that particular thing. So, now what is happening is that this function, function the relationship between mu and s is given by mu is equal to mu max s multiplied by s over k s plus s is given by this equation. So, suppose if I were to plot a graph between s that is a substrate concentration and then mu here, mu is a specific growth rate and then the substrate concentration on this particular thing. When the substrate concentration is 0, there is no substrate concentration then what is going to happen to the growth rate? Growth rate is also 0, no food, no growth rate, no growth. So, then as the substrate concentration increases, growth rate also increases like this and then finally, what would happen is that it would go and then it will become sort of asymptotic or it could be stationary, it will become stationary to this. As the x s increases, this particular thing is almost constant. So, this constant thing is called as mu max, this is called a mu max, maximum growth rate has occurred at this particular thing. Now, again going back as the substrate concentration is increasing, mu also increases and this follows this trace of this curve, this is a curve and then beyond this particular concentration of the substrate, whether the substrate is this or substrate is this. Okay, whatever is the substrate mu value is constant. That is the mu value when it takes a mu max value then that is a independent of substrate concentration. The up to this particular period up to this particular point probably the mu is function of substrate concentration beyond this particular thing it is independent of substrate concentration. So, that is what we can see this particular thing. So, that is a mu max, mu max is the maximum maximum uh, growth rate constant 
growth rate constant now I am putting it this is a constant really indeed a constant growth rate here it is only specific growth rate and here it is a constant because there is only one unique value for a particular microorganism for a particular substrate for particular wastewater as well as for particular group of microorganisms mu max will be the only one value that is why it is a constant and S is the concentration of the substrate. and milligram per liter so this can also be called as a BOD whatever I have BOD in the wastewater and then KS now the KS is a term which I have to say KS is nothing but the value of S this is KS what is KS KS is the value of S when mu is equal to mu max by 2 half of mu max so I know mu max value half of mu max value I will take it and corresponding S value is equal to KS. So, KS is a saturation substrate concentration substrate concentration when mu is equal to half of mu max that is what it is ok. These are all terms are indicated here. So, in other words mu is a function of the substrate. So, substituting back in this equation I have so dx by dt the growth rate of microorganisms is equal to mu into uh, mu, mu is given by mu max multiplied by s over k s plus s multiplied by the x. So, you can see here the growth rate of microorganisms is a function of depends upon a constant mu max another constant k s k s is also a constant. So, I can write it here this is also a constant k s is also constant it depends upon the substrate concentration and it depends upon the microbial concentration. So, this is the actual equation which uh, governs the growth of microorganisms and then growth rate curve. So, now let us take one case, case 1 I will try to simplify this particular equation with uh, certain growth uh, certain conditions. Let us take case 1, case 1 is that when substrate when S is unlimited what does it mean? Substrate is unlimited, when the substrate is unlimited means if I go to this particular graph somewhere here I am very high substrate concentration substrate unlimited means very high concentration of substrate. So, when is the high substrate concentration is present in the reactor during the initial periods during the initial periods of the of the batch reactor during in the batch reactor during the initial periods we have this particular thing. So, that S, uh, S is very very high compared to K S. K s is small, s is very high and hence I can say K s plus s is can be approximated to s. I can in the denominator K s plus s can be approximated to s because s is very great compared to K s. That means, if I take that equation now and substitute this condition that the growth rate is uh, uh, that is substrate is unlimited d x by d t equal to mu max multiplied by s over s because k s plus s is s multiplied by x. So, this s and s cancels out d x by d t is equal to mu max into x. So, can I solve this equation now? Yes, I can solve this equation. I could not have solved the equation d x by d t is equal to mu into x, mu is a specific growth rate and mu max is a specific growth rate constant maximum growth specific growth rate constant this is a constant that is why I can differentiate d x by x is equal to mu max into d t. I can solve this equation when t is equal to 0 x is equal to x naught and when t is equal to t x is equal to x. So, that means the solution of this particular thing is nothing but uh, <coughs> and applying the 
this thing x is equal to x naught into e to the power of mu max multiplied by t. So, this is the solution of this. So, this particular equation is telling me that x is equal to x naught into e to the power of mu max into t. Mu max is a positive value, so this is all positive value that x is uh, a positive value multiplied by x naught and hence it is a, a positive value. So, in other words, this particular thing, this particular equation describes the growth of microorganisms at exponential growth rate. So, that means this equation describes the exponential growth rate. So, or this is a log growth rate of the curve, log growth rate of the curve. Suppose if I plot this graph again t versus x, so I have this, this is the curve what we have. So, this particular thing is represented by dx by dt is equal to mu max into x, mu max into x, this is a curve. So, this, this exponentially it goes so, that means this is exponential curve. That means this exponentiality is valid only up to certain level, afterwards it is not valid. We will continue in the next class uh, when the substrate is limited. In this unlimited substrate we have taken, when the substrate is limited, what is going to happen we will discuss in the next class.